Caribbean, I always like to say that it's like a mirror of, of the United States market. Uh, Whatever is happening here in the economy or just generally social trends, etc., it's reflected right across the Caribbean. And what we've found that over the last, ever since like the 2008, 2009, during that very difficult time um, in the U.S. economy with the recession, um, the Caribbean was very negatively impacted. So what had happened is that some of the major industries, which for example tourism is a major industry across many of the Caribbean countries, with maybe the only exception would be Trinidad and Tobago, there was a serious downturn in economic activity in the region. And it was basically just reflecting what was happening in the United States. Um, thankfully, uh, we are coming out slowly in the States out of the economic recession, and that is also being reflected across the region. So the outlook is quite positive, but positive in a, in a, in a reserved way. You know, we're not expecting a big boom right away, but obviously over time we're expecting to see economic growth and economic activity definitely picking up and we're actually seeing that in the indicators with tourism. In terms of trends, again, like I said, you know, the, the Caribbean basically mirrors what's going on in the United States. So first of all, with the, the downturn in the economy, there was certainly this trend towards looking for value. You know, a lot of the consumers, I mean, the consumers, the, 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 the importers, distributors, retailers, etc., they're looking for products and lines that they could sell to the consumers that they could afford because what was happening is with the downturn in the economy, people were losing their jobs, you know, things were getting tighter, so the consumers were searching for value. They still wanted their quality and still wanted, you know, you know, good durability, but at the same time they needed products for, for value. And what we found is that a lot of the retailers were asking me and, and distributors for private label lines, you know. Um, they didn't necessarily want it store brands because in the Caribbean we're relatively small markets making up one large good market and they wanted like, you know, off brands or private label grocery lines that they could sell to their consumers at a, a better price point. So that was a major trend that took place in the last few years and it continues because as we have found also right here in the United States that um, the increased demand for private label continues even though you know, the economy is getting better and, and consumers are feeling a little more prosperous in, in their um, pocketbooks. So that was one trend. Another trend is the whole healthy living, healthy eating trend. And that is taking off. Um, I, I still say that organic is a, is a niche opportunity in the Caribbean and only by virtue by, of the fact that we have small markets and organic still does require a certain higher price point, more premium pricing. So from that perspective, organic is still a niche. However, generally speaking, they're looking for natural products, healthier products, you know, there's a strong demand for gluten-free. Um, we have high incidence of heart disease and diabetes in the region, so, you know, they're looking for diabetic products or anything that's good for your heart and healthy. So that demand and um, trend is definitely taking off and increasing. So that's a good opportunity for um, suppliers or producers who make these type of products. And I don't think that's going to change, it's going to increase even further. Be reminded that we have two types of opportunities in the region. One is for the local consumers, which I call the retail side of the market, and then of course food service, because tourism, like I said, is a major industry across the region with the exception of one or two markets. So I say anything to do with food service items and also retail products. The major categories to the region, I would say, are in meats, uh, beef, pork, poultry, uh, dairy is big in the region. Those are some of the major product categories, fruits and vegetables, uh, especially for beverages and uh, juices. Um, we like alcoholic beverages too. We have our local rooms and stuff like that, but there's also a demand for wine and in some markets, bears and stuff like that. And of course, snack food is big. And healthy snack food is, is, is also a, a good, uh, good product line to get into or try to introduce to the region. So those are the opportunities I see right now across the region. I always say this, and I'm kind of repeating myself, but I like to reinforce my points. The Caribbean is a great market opportunity as a region, but it's several little markets that make up that region. And, you know, I've always supported an idea where we can bring our U.S. suppliers to not just one small Caribbean market, but to two markets in one trip. And it's a great opportunity because we are so import dependent on food and beverage products that we, we, our markets are literally open to receive and in fact US uh, products still dominate across our region in terms of their presence and market share of the Caribbean markets. Now next year for 2014 we identified two uh, what, what I call big Caribbean market opportunities because Bahamas is our number two market 
for U.S. exports of consumer-oriented products or food and beverage products. After the our largest market is um, the Dominican Republic, so Bahamas is the number two market, and Jamaica, the other market that we're looking at to take the focus trade mission, is the number five market, falling behind Trinidad and Tobago and Cuba. So these are two what I call sizable markets in the Caribbean. And usually when I uh, talk to suppliers and tell them about a strategy for the Caribbean, I always say, if you want, there are two ways of approaching the Caribbean. You can go directly to markets or indirectly through wholesalers, brokers, etc., out, you know, out of South Florida or some other regional hub. Um, and I usually identify like, four or five top markets that they should try and approach directly. And both the Bahamas, being number two for consumer foods, and Jamaica, number five, are good target markets to approach directly. So it's, it's almost opportune that we would take our um, exporters to these two markets next year in 2014. What I would also like to add is that even though I just spoke about the economic recession that we were experiencing at the same time the United States was experiencing, both in the Bahamas and in Jamaica, the imports of U.S. food products increased every year. On an average, in the Bahamas, about 6% every year, the imports of these products. And in fact, they reached record import levels in 2012. And similarly, in Jamaica, we reached record import levels of U.S. consumer-oriented products in 2012. And Jamaica increased over the last five years by about 4%. So, you know, it's just, the prospects are good, just generally. And now, I think, even better as our economies turn in the region, in Jamaica and the Bahamas, they're seeing improvements in tourism and other areas. So I think the time is right to visit those two markets. That um, data that you got from ECLAC, from the Economic uh, Latin American Commission, is consistent. And I suppose when they talk about imports, I don't know if it's just agricultural generally or you know products generally, but it is consistent with the trend that I'm seeing when I look at the U.S. Department of Agriculture's export data um, over the last five years. Again, talking from 2008, when just around that time when the economy really went down here in the states and also in the Caribbean, to the year 2012 last year, we saw consistent increase in U.S. exports of food products, again, our consumer-oriented um, agricultural products, to the Caribbean region. And in fact, looking at even data for this year, looking at the January to August um, year-to-date um, information that's available from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, um, exports of consumer-oriented goods to the Caribbean increased by 7% in 2013 over 2012. So you know that, yeah, and again, at record levels we're talking about. So you know that the, you know, the prospects are really looking good, just generally for the future. And I think, I think the advantage that U.S. exporters have um, is that we're, you know, you're closer to the, your, your next door neighbors to the Caribbean. So you have the advantage of proximity. I would say that you know, we cannot be complacent because of that, because um, of course, you know, there's rising competition coming right from our own backyard in South America, from Brazil and Colombia and other um, Latin American countries, Mexico. So the, the truth is that um, yes, the United States has the advantage, many advantages, because you have the perception of high quality, good, um, su good supply, reliability and supply, safety, all these uh, wonderful things, innovativeness, but at the end of the day, you know, so I think that's why we dominate still, and still there's growth of our um, U.S. products in the Caribbean, uh, food products particularly. Um, however, don't be complacent, and that's why we need to visit the markets to make sure that we maintain our presence and increase our opportunities in the Caribbean region. The chairman of the Caribbean Tourism Organization had said at the beginning of this year, look, reflecting on what has been happening over the last few years in tourism, that they are optimistic about tourism for the industry. I mean, last year in 2012, they reached record levels you know, over the fa last five years of 25 million tourists visiting the region. And frankly, they said that, you know, it, we're not out of the woods because Europe is still turn, you know, our, we get a lot of tourists from the United States, Canada, Europe, you know, and, and Asia, but they said that Europe, which is a major market for us, is still on the downturn. However, um, the United States and Canada have significantly ticked up, and they're, and they're also saying that we're getting new tourism entrants from South America, because we know that a lot of the South American markets are doing well. So their pros the prospects for tourism are very positive, and that, I think that's part of what's driving it, because like I said, I mean, yes, we have our domestic market, but we also, food service is a big market in the Caribbean. And also because um, a lot of 
uh, Caribbean residents get employment from tourism, it all sort of triggers the whole um, benefits to the economies, you know, trickles right down. So I think that is one of the factors. And also, just to mention, one of the major growth markets in the Caribbean for the consumption of U.S. food products is Trinidad and Tobago. They have nothing to do with tourism. Their major industries are petroleum, natural gas, but they have been buoyant for years. And then they actually weathered the, the recession very well. They were one of those markets that didn't really were affected. And, and they, their consumption has been growing tremendously. So the, obviously the oil and gas sector has been doing also very well in the region. Of course, that's specific to that particular market. Mm -hmm. It's a little difficult because, and this is what I like to, um, when I say that it's difficult, uh, I like to say the Caribbean is an open book. And, 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 and the reality is because we're so import dependent on, you know, on food products and products generally to our region because we don't have a very large production base as say the, the bigger countries in our region or in the world. So we, you find that we are pretty open to imports from um, the United States and, and other suppliers. So generally I would say, I wouldn't consider import regulations a big issue. However, what I would say is that um, certainly if you have products that are selling in the United States, they, they meet the FDA or other re regulatory requirements of this market, more than likely you're guaranteed access into a Caribbean market. However, I don't I, I always recommend that um, exporters, when they're trying to sell to a market, they consult with their import partner in the respective Caribbean market and also utilize data that's available you know, through food export or through the USDA website or you know, the, the attache reports that they have because there are specific regulations that relate to a specific market. For example, in Jamaica, where I'm from, they have an import ban on pork from the United States. So that's, a, that's, that's an exception because pork has allowed access to all the other markets in the Caribbean, is, but that's just one little exception. So I do caution exporters. Generally I say we have pretty open markets, usually you wouldn't have a problem, but always check out the specific market that you're looking at to make sure that there's no one little peculiarity that you may affect your specific products, you know? When you say major, I would say no. And, but, but usually, um, yeah, I, that's what I'd say, no, but just, just be careful to make sure you don't just lump them all in one basket. And if you're looking at a specific Caribbean market, you check them out first. And like I said, what your, be your best resource is your import, your trading partner in, on, the, on the importing end in that respective market. And of course, the other resources that I mentioned that are available online or through Food Exports Helpline or other, uh, other services, you know. Well, what comes to mind is a success story that I need to <laughs> upload it, um, of a, um, a company that recently participated in um, the Caribbean and Central America's bias mission that we have every year. This is a food export activity that they do jointly with another um, state regional trade group, uh, SUSTA. And it's held in June in Miami. And it's a really cost-effective way for U.S. suppliers to just fly down to Miami with some samples and stuff and meet a d day, a day and a half with importers, distributors, buyers from the Caribbean and Central American region. And there was a particular company that, um, and I, I only know of one market where they successfully sold to the market and maybe there are others, that came from the Northeast and they had a very, very wonderful product of um, soups and other sauces made from seafood. Del I mean, delicious lobster bisque and clam chowders and, 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 and it's a frozen product and I, I, I also think that it's also very um, convenient for use both for the food service industry and also for domestic, I mean for, you know, domestic consumers. And this particular company met with, well I know for a fact they met with our Bermuda buyer, maybe there are other buyers from other markets that um, were also interested and that Bermuda buyer went back, was so interested in the line and immediately placed an order with this company and they shipped the initial order, you know, and this is one thing that, you know, companies need to be aware of that in the Caribbean they may start small, so I know the initial order was valid at about 9,000 US, small order, less than container load. And within a couple of weeks of that, it did, the product did so well, the, the, the soups and the whatever, it, they, I think they sold it to the food service and they're going to try and roll it out to retail afterwards. They immediately turned around and pr uh, uh, requested another order for about 20,000 US dollars. I mean, and, and I think this is just the beginning. So, you know, I mean, but I know the US supplier, he sent me an email and he's thrilled. And I know the Bermuda supplier is thrilled because it's a good opportunity for them that they've gotten this line. Because what Caribbean buyers are looking for, because don't, 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 um, how, do I, how do I put this, U.S. major brands, they're all over the Caribbean, they dominate, but they're always looking, because they have such confidence in U.S. products, they're always looking for a new line that has 
good quality, reasonable pricing, and um, you know that's new and different, innovative, and 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 also, I mean, in this particular case, it's delicious seafood from the northeast. So, I think that that's the type of thing they're looking for. And another another example of a of a, a product that's matching the trends too, because I mean, I think the seafood that soup line had the convenience, the good taste, and you know, reasonable pricing. Was um, there was a yogurt company that's into Greek yogurts that did a market build up very recently also, and this company obviously wanted to. They, I mean, clearly they knew what they're about and they wanted to target the Caribbean. So they had several market builder uh, research um, services. You know, they requested research services for several Caribbean markets. And in every single market that we did the market research for this yogurt company, and it's Greek yogurt, which is a new trend hitting the Caribbean, there was an overwhelming response. So that, that just tells us that, you know, once you come to the Caribbean with a good product, obviously, and the, of course you have the advantage because we have a lot of cable TV and we have the exposure of US television. The company actually advertises on the US TV and it's a new trend that's breaking out in the Caribbean. You have an overwhelming response to the line. So I mean, you know, it's just some basic facts of doing business in the States anyway. It just applies similarly in the Caribbean. What I like to see, and I, I may sound like a broken record, but I just like to drive home those points, is that the Caribbean is a great market opportunity as a region, but always bear in mind there's a lot of little markets that make up that opportunity. And I, I always, especially for companies that are new to export, I think it's a great place to wet your feet in the, in the whole export scenario because it's a little more gentle on you than maybe some of the other bigger markets that have a lot more regulations and import requirements etc so it's almost as if it's a great testing ground however if you're looking for the huge volumes and the container loads and the, to happen right away if at all the Caribbean probably is not the market for you what we like and what, what, what the buyers in my region always ask me to impress upon companies um, that are trying to target their region is that Definitely initially, the, the import, uh, sorry, the, the orders may be small, and the, by virtue of the fact that they are small in their markets and they can't afford to take the risk of bringing in a whole container load of product which they don't know will ever sell. So that they may start small, but if it does very well, there's potential for it to grow. So that's, that's a very important factor in our region. The other thing I would say also, um, I always like to say in the Caribbean, exclusivity is not a dirty word. Uh, I always recommend if you're going to deal directly by selling to a Caribbean market that you identify one strong import distribution partner uh, in that market. There are some exceptions. So there are some markets where you can deal with a retailer on the side and maybe have one exclusive distributor. But generally in the Caribbean, by virtue of our size, it suits you and it suits that particular trading partner that you have one partner that you give exclusive rights to distribute your products and represent your products in the specific market. And that would be a win-win situation. So that's my, my recommendations for the region.